Now that C Sharp has been released for Unity 3D's Project Tiny, let's make our first project with it, which will be a snake game. To do that, we'll need to make sure that we have Unity version 2019.2.ob3 .2 or newer installed on our system. And then after ensuring we have that installed, let's click on new and create a new 2D project. I'll call mine YouTube C Sharp. And at the time of recording this video, how Project Tiny works is all of your Project Tiny projects can exist within your one Unity 3D project. So you don't have to keep making multiple Unity 3D projects to hold your Project Tiny projects. So once you name your project, click create. And after Unity opens, we'll need to install the Project Tiny package. So go to Window, Package Manager, Advanced, Show Preview Packages, and then after your preview packages load, search for Project Tiny. Select Project Tiny and go to the bottom right hand of the menu and click Install. Confirm that you're using version 0.15.3 or newer to be able to use the C Sharp API. After the package is installed, we can close this window and we can go to Dots New Project and create a new Dots project. Let's call it Snake and click on Save. And this will generate a new Dots project inside of our Unity 3D project. Once your Dots project is generated, you'll see it says Main Scene. And if you open the main scene up, you'll have a camera on it. And on the camera entity, you'll notice that the component system is a little different than normal Unity 3D. But it's pretty easy to get used to and not that much different. So the first thing we'll want to do when creating a snake project is create an empty entity. And this is going to be the head of our snake, so we'll call it snake head. And we'll need a graphic to display it, so we'll add a sprite 2D renderer. The graphic that I'm going to use is going to be a 1x1 one one black square. So I'm going to create a new graphics folder inside of my snake project. And inside of here, I'll drag my 1x1 one one black square. Once you drag your graphic into your project, make sure you click on it. Change your pixels per unit to 1. Turn off Generate Physics Shape. Go to Filter Mode, change it from Bilinear to Point No Filter. Your Max Size to 32 and the Compression to None. Click Apply. And then after that's applied, go to your Snake Head. And drag your Snake Graphic onto the Sprite 2D Renderer. Then we can also go to our camera and change our orthographic camera size to 10. Now that we have our snake head displayed on the screen, let's create a component to be able to find the snake head entity within one of our systems. So in your snake project, let's create a new folder and call this components. And within here, create a new C sharp system and name it snake head. This isn't actually going to be a system, but within Unity Tiny right now, that's the only button we have for creating a C Sharp file. Once you've created your Snakehead C Sharp file, don't just double click it for the first time you open a script within a new Unity Tiny project. You actually have to go to Assets Open.C Sharp Project, which will open your preferred IDE. The IDE I'm going to be using for this video will be JetBrains, but if you're using Visual Studios, the process is pretty much the same. Once your IDE finishes loading, you'll want to go to your Explorer pane if you're using JetBrains and change it from Unity to Solution, and then go over to where it says ASMJS Debug Default and change it to Windows.NET Debug Default. Then we can go to Run edit configurations and change our project to the snake project that we created. Click apply then OK. And if you go into here, you'll be able to find the snake project we created and all the scripts that are currently created for it. Open up your snakehead script. So once you have your snakehead file open, you'll want to change where it says component system to I component data because we're creating a component that lives on an entity and not a system that acts on components. So once we change component system to say I component data, we'll also want to change where it says class to say struct because I component data is used structs and not classes. 
you'll now want to remove the protected override void and instead let's add a variable called direction which will be a float 3 and this will store the direction that our snakehead is currently moving in. Let's go ahead and put this within a namespace called snake to better organize our project. Once we have that done we can go back into unity, let it compile, and we should be able to add the snakehead component to our snakehead entity. So click on add component and search for snakehead and you'll see it says I component data snake snakehead. And you'll see the direction is visible on our component but we won't ever really need that to be visible. So if we go into our IDE and try to add in hide inspector, it won't show up. And the reason is, is because we need to add an assembly reference. So if we go back into our Unity 3D project and to the root directory of our project that we created, we can find the .asm def file and go to the assembly definition references, scroll to the bottom of it, click the plus button, and the new reference that we want to add is going to be unity.authoring.core. Once we add the new assembly definition reference, we'll click apply, which will recompile our project. Once the project's done recompiling, we can go to assets, open.csharp project to regenerate our dots project so that the new scripts will be available inside of our IDE. And after that's done, we can go back into our IDE and say using unity.authoring.core and once we add that using in we can put the hide inspector over our direction variable. And now once we go back into unity you'll see that the direction variable is now hidden on our component. So now that we have the snakehead set up with the snakehead component let's create a system to move the snakehead around. So go into your scripts folder and create a new C sharp system. We'll call this snake movement system and after you create the file, go to assets open.csharp project to make the script available inside of your IDE. Once you have the snake movement system open, we're going to want to find the snakehead entity that we created that holds the snakehead component. And to do that, we'll say entities dot for each, add another parenthesis, and then we'll type entity with a capital E, and then entity with a lowercase e put a comma, and then we're going to reference the snakehead component that we created a minute ago and call it snake. Then we can put a lambda expression and an open and closed bracket. So this will find every entity inside of our world that has a snakehead component and allow us to make changes to it. But the changes that we want to make to it are all in the translation component. So let's also reference the translation component so we can make changes to it. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is say var position is equal to translation dot value. This is store the current position of our snakehead into a variable called position. Then we'll have to access the input system quite a few times so we'll store that in a variable also. So say var input system is equal to world dot get existing system the existing system that we want is the input system. And then we can say if input system dot get key, the key we want is the W key. And if we're pushing the W key, we'll set the snake's direction to be a new float three with a Y value of one and an x value and a z value of 0. Now if we're pushing the a button we'd want to set the direction to negative 1 on the x-axis and 0 on the y-axis. So let's say input system dot get key key code dot a and if you're pushing a We'll set the snake direction to negative 1 on the x and 0 on the y. Now we can copy this and paste it. And if you're pushing the s key, we'll set x to 0 and y to negative 1. And then the last key we'll set up is the d key. 
And if you're pushing D, we want to move 1 on the x-axis and 0 on the y-axis. After we set the snake dot direction up, we can say position is plus or equal to snake dot direction. And then we can say translation dot value is equal to position. So now that we have this set up, we can go back into our Unity project, click play, and see if we can move our snake head around with the snake movement system that we just created. Let's click play, wait for it to build. After it builds, let's try to move, and you see we can move, but we're moving extremely fast. And we'll move at different speeds depending on what the frame rate of our game is. So to fix that, we can go back into our IDE, and right here where we're doing position plus or equal to snake dot direction let's say multiplied by world dot tiny environment dot frame delta time then if we click play inside of our IDE since we've already built the game once inside of unity you'll see that our snake head moves a lot slower and will move at the same speed no matter what our game's frame rate is. But that's not exactly how snake works. Usually when you play snake, your snake head doesn't move at a smooth frame rate. It usually moves one unit at a time or one snake head size at a time, which in our case is one unit. And it usually moves at a given tick rate for the game. So let's set up a tick rate and make the game and make the snake head move one unit per every tick rate of the game. I think the easiest way to do this is if we go back into our Unity project and create a new component. We'll call this component game config. Making sure to go to assets open dot C sharp project after creating a new script. Go back into your IDE and we can open the game config component that we just created. Change it from component system to an I component data. Change the class to a struct. Get rid of the protect override. And inside of here, we can have a public float. This float will be a tick rate, which will hold the rate at which the snake head gets moved. And we'll have another float called last frame time, which will hold the frame time for the last time the tick happened. So once we have both of these set up, we can add it to the namespace that we created earlier called snake. And while we're doing this, we can actually go back into our snake movement system and you'll see that it says using snake, but if we get rid of that, it gives us an error on the snake head. But if we say namespace snake and add this class to the namespace, it should get rid of that error. Excellent. So now that we have the game config set up within the snake namespace, we can go back into our Unity 3D project, and then we can go to the configurations, which is at the bottom of the hierarchy menu, and we'll add a new component, and the component will be game config. We'll change the tick rate to 0.5, and then we can go back into our IDE, go back into the snake movement system, and above where we do the position and translation changes, we'll say var game config is equal to world dot tiny environment dot get config data. The config data that we want is the game config. Then we can say if world dot tiny environment, let's actually store world dot tiny environment into a variable. So we'll say var tiny env is equal to world.tiny environment and then we can just say tiny env instead of world.tiny environment so tiny env dot frame time minus game config dot last frame time is less than game config dot tick rate return and this is saying if the current frame time of the game minus the last tick of the game is less than the tick rate will return. So it'll keep the game from running every frame and it'll only allow it to run 
for the length that we set our tick rate up to. And if enough time has passed for this part of the code to run, we'll want to say game config dot last frame time is equal to tiny dot frame time. And we'll need to cast this to a float. Then after making a change to the game config component, we'll need to say tiny dot set config data game config. Now if we go back into our Unity project and click play, our snakehead should move only at the allowed tick rate. You'll see it's happening, but it's not moving one full unit, and that's because we still have the multiplication of the frame delta time, so we can remove that and save. Now we can click run from within our IDE because we didn't make any changes inside of our inspector. And you'll see that our snakehead moves one unit every tick rate. You can increase the tick rate by going back into your project, going to your configurations, and changing the tick rate. We'll try 0.1. Since we made a change within our inspector, we need to click play within our Unity project before we can click play within our IDE again, but you can see our snakehead is moving a lot faster. I think the next thing that we'll do is add in screen wrapping for our snakehead so when we go outside of the top of the screen, we'll appear at the bottom of the screen. To do that, we'll go back into our IDE and the snake movement system and we need to get data for our screen size. So we'll say var display info is equal to tinyenv.getconfigdata. data. The configuration data that we want is display info, which is a class that comes pre-built with Unity Tiny. Once we have our display info, we'll say var aspect ratio is equal to display info dot width divided by display info dot height and we'll want to cast this to a float. Now that we have our game's aspect ratio we can get the x screen size by saying var x screen size is equal to aspect ratio times the orthographic size of our camera which we set to 10 earlier. But instead of leaving this as just a 10 number, let's put it in a variable just to make things cleaner. So we'll say private constant float orthographic size is equal to 10. Now that we have our x screen size and our orthographic size, we can go in between our position and our translation and say if position.x is greater than x screen size, position.x is equal to negative x screen size. If position.x is less than negative x screen size, position.x is equal to x screen size. If position.y is greater than orthographic size, position.y is equal to negative orthographic size. And then if position.y is less than negative orthographic size, position.y is equal to orthographic size. Then we can also add an else to each of these ifs. So now let's click play and see if our screen wrapping works. Excellent, it does. Excellent, this all seemed to have worked. I think that's all we'll do for this video. In the next video, we'll add the snake tail and food system in. But until then, have a wonderful day. And if you like this video or looking forward to the next video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Thank you and goodbye.